Chapter 581 Moody obviously ignored Ron's nonsense, and after a glance at him, he hurried away with his wooden legs. Ron slowly breathed a sigh of relief, and then felt that the appearance he was scared just now was very shameless, so he suppressed his voice and explained it to Harry and the others. Ivan stared at Moody's away back, and suddenly remembered that the coaching time Moody had revealed in the previous class was exactly one year, which coincided with the curse set by Voldemort. Is a coincidence? Still said that Dumbledore wanted to try whether he could avoid Voldemort's curse on the defense against the dark arts professor. After all, the biggest effect of this curse is to prevent each professor from teaching for more than a year. All kinds of accidents are just derivatives of achieving this goal. If Moody's leaves after a year, maybe the curse will not be aimed at him like that. If that is the case, maybe Moody's can leave this position as safely as Lupin. In the next few weeks, nothing happened in the castle, and Harry completely forgot the scenes in his dreams, because the heavy lessons had weighed on him, especially Moody's defense against the dark arts class. The legendary old Auror divided each class into two parts, first to explain some black magic or common offensive magic protection skills, and then the intense and exciting actual combat exercise. The students who got to the point were asked by Moody to break the curse he personally cast according to the method given in the class. If someone behaves badly, he will be merciless, and the only thing he will do is reprimand. Even so, Moody's courses are still very popular. After all, there are too few practical courses for hands-on combat, not to mention that they can often learn many useful defense skills from the Defense Against the Dark Arts class. It's just a headache for the little wizards that Moody's will leave a lot of homework before class, usually for them to give a method of self-defense in a specific situation. I still can't write casually because Moody's will pick people out in class and practice on the spot to test the feasibility of this method. For example, in a homework discussing how to defend against the Tarantella dance spell, Seamus suddenly thought that he could roll and hide first, and then sprint in front of his opponent and break the opponent's nose with a punch. Play the effect of defeating the enemy. However, in the actual combat drill, Seamer was hit by Moody's spell before he could roll, and finally did a tap dance for most of the class and almost broke his leg. So when they were in the defense against the dark arts class, everyone was always in a cycle of fear of being named and expecting to see others having fun. So how are we going to deal with the disarming curse with many obstacles? But I've written this last time, or look for cover, hide under the table? God, what if Professor Moody hits me this time? In the morning, in the Gryffindor lounge, Ron watched this after-school homework collapse and shouted, especially since Moody's hadn't allowed them to write similar defensive methods too frequently. Ivan, can you show us how you wrote it? Harry also had a headache and turned his head to refer to Ivan's answer. Are you sure you want to copy my homework? Ivan said with a weird face and directly pushed the workbook over. Harry and Ron immediately looked up. Their faces suddenly became very embarrassed and it read randomly, we should cast the disarming curse faster to achieve the goal of countering our opponents. Is this okay? Harry looked at Ivan speechlessly. Which time did my method fail? Ivan shrugged and covered the homework, preparing to hand it in tomorrow. Harry and Ron looked at each other and finally sighed in distress. This is why they collapsed every time. They couldn't do the defense methods written by Ivan, and they couldn't copy them. At first, Ivan was trying to save trouble, and there was even the iron armor curse in the list of coping methods, and I wrote this every time. Ivan gave up this panacea defensive spell until Moody could not bear to order them not to write the same thing every time, and because he didn't want to bother his brain, the answers he gave were more nonsense. For example, if you encounter an attack by a dark wizard, it should be subdued and sent to Azkaban as soon as possible. If you kill the opponent in advance, you can effectively remove the threat posed by the opponent, etc. Not to mention that they think nonsense, even Moody thinks so, but after personally verifying it in class, Moody has to admit that these methods of Ivan are very useful. So that in the recent Defense Against the Dark Arts class, Moody simply let Ivan be an assistant, 
using offensive magic to test other people in the school. Unable to get help from Ivan, Harry and Ron had to turn to Hermione for help, but the little witch didn't give them face at all. She closed the workbook with a brush and stared at them. You should think of a solution by yourself. Professor Moody said in class that we cannot expect others to protect ourselves. The two were completely lost, so they had to lower their heads to think about it. www.mtlnovel.com Seeing Harry and Ron in distress, Ivan shook his head secretly. With such a good teacher as Moody, neither of them study hard. It's really hopeless. From the perspective of the growth of the students, Moody is definitely the most competent defense against the dark arts professor he has ever seen, even surpassing Lupin. After all, Moody's is more strict, and it is also vigorous and resolute in doing things, almost forcing the students to grow up quickly. If you learn this all year, not to mention what a good fighter you become, but at least in the event of an emergency, you will not be at a loss, and you will have the ability to protect yourself. Of course, Moody's radicalism is probably also related to Dumbledore's secret instruction. The only thing that surprised Ivan was that Moody didn't call everyone up to test whether it could resist the imperious curse in the past few days. But it's right to think about it. It should be a quiz specially made by Barty Crouch Jr., specifically for Harry, so as to understand how different Harry is and able to defeat the unforgivable curse. It took more than half an hour before Ron and Harry finally finished Moody's homework, and then a few people went to the auditorium to prepare for lunch. When a few people walked to the hall, they unexpectedly found that a large group of students was blocking the door, squeezing around a big announcement erected at the foot of the marble staircase. What happened? Ron asked curiously. Ivan squeezed in and took a look. An announcement was posted on the wall, which read about the Triwizard Tournament. It mentioned that the representatives of Booth Batten and Demstrang will be held on October 10th, arrived at 6 o'clock in the evening on Friday the 30th. Chapter 5 and 82 Ivan, what's written on it? Harry squeezed in with difficulty, but he was not tall, blocked by the little wizard in front, and couldn't see the specific content of the announcement at all. It said Booth Batten and Demstrang will arrive at Hogwarts at 6 o'clock in the evening next Friday, and everyone has to go to the door to greet them, Ivan explained. Friday afternoon? Great, the last session should be potions class. Harry's first reaction was that Snape's potions class might not be used anymore, which is indeed a thankful thing for him. Where are the candidates for the warriors? Have they already decided? Ron asked hurriedly. Not mentioned above, it should be waited for the students of Booth Batten and Demstrang to arrive before choosing, Ivan said casually. In addition to a few of them, the little wizards gathered nearby are also discussing this topic, arguing about who can become the warrior representing Hogwarts. The little wizards in every academy hope that people from this academy can be elected, and some senior students are thinking about how to get this qualification. The most talked about is Cedric from Hufflepuff College. As for Ivan, although the performance is outstanding every school year, and some big news can be made from time to time, but where is Dumbledore's age limit, most of the young wizards are unwilling to believe that Ivan can find a way to crack it. Otherwise, what warrior would they choose? Just wash and sleep. Because of this announcement in the hall, the campus became very lively in the next few days. The Triwizard Tournament has become a hot spot, and everyone has more talks after dinner. Even the interior of the castle has begun a new round of decoration, which is more solemn than when Ivan received the Merlin Medal. Those dusty portraits that had not been moved for hundreds of years were taken down one after another until they were wiped clean and there was no trace of dust before they were hung up again. The armors placed in the corridors were also polished one by one, and almost all of them could be used as mirrors. As the reception place, the auditorium is even more completely new, with huge silk banners hung on the walls, and the flags of the four colleges are flying high above, and traces of magic have been cast everywhere. The other staff and professors also appeared to be extremely nervous. They regulated the dress and behavior of every student. If someone looked sloppy, Filch would be caught and cursed. 
All this is naturally to welcome the students of Booth Batten and Durmstrang. Every professor is unwilling to lose Hogwarts' face in front of the staff and students of other schools. In the last Transfiguration class, Professor McGonagall was very furious because Neville accidentally grafted his ear to a cactus while practicing the conversion spell. You should look at Halls. He learned this simple spell in about the first grade. I don't expect you to be like him, but I beg you to work harder. Don't show your stuff in front of Durmstrang's people. Let them see that a fourth grade student can't even learn the most basic conversion spell. Professor McGonagall roared sharply and almost cried Neville. After class, Professor McGonagall asked Ivan to stay. It's a pity, Halls. You are probably the best student ever at Hogwarts. If you don't have that age limit, you can surely become a warrior and win the glory for Hogwarts. Professor McGonagall saw Xiang Yifan said with emotion, Professor, do you approve of me participating in the competition? Ivan looked at her in surprise, wondering why McGonagall, who has always been rigid and lawful, hinted at encouraging himself to participate. If you can, why not? Professor McGonagall smiled. Although she didn't know the strength of Ivan, she knew a general idea. The many levels of the Triwizard Tournament are really not dangerous for Ivan, and she certainly has no worries. On the contrary, McGonagall thought that as long as Ivan was selected, the Triwizard victory would be no more suspense, let all, one his peers, even the Auror of the Ministry of Magic might not be Ivan's opponent. More importantly, apart from Ivan, Gryffindor College really has no outstanding senior students. McGonagall didn't want people from other colleges to get ahead, and he didn't want to see Hogwarts lose the game. The three major colleges in Europe have been fighting for hundreds of years. Everyone wants their school to become the number one in Europe. If Ivan can find a way to pass the age limit and throw his name into the Goblet of Fire, she believes that Principal Dumbledore will open one eye and close one eye. The proposal to set the age limit this time was jointly proposed by Bus Barton and Durmstrang, and it may not be aimed at you, McGonagall said with some dissatisfaction. Ivan touched his nose and didn't answer. He thought it shouldn't be so exaggerated. There is no him in the original time and space, but the Triwizard Tournament still has this restriction. It can be seen that the original intention is indeed for the safety of the junior wizards to avoid the lack of strength of the contestants and cause casualties. But from the outsider's point of view, www.mtlnovel.com, it's obvious for yourself. Anyway, you can come to me if you have any questions. Professor McGonagall patted Ivan on the shoulder, said vaguely, then packed up the teaching aids and left the classroom. Ivan who stayed has a strange expression, he muttered to himself. So, I am also ordered to cheat? Thinking of this, Ivan suddenly felt a lot more relaxed. At least he didn't need to worry about Dumbledore's troubles after he crossed the age line and successfully participated in the election. Out of the classroom door, Harry, Ron, and Hermione were all waiting for him in the corridor. Evan, what did Professor McGonagall just tell you? Hermione asked with the book in her arms. It's some high-end skills of transfiguration charm. You know, the knowledge in class is no longer useful to me. Ivan said foolishly, without revealing the meaning, he was worried that Ron's big mouth would say it. Time passed, and soon it was October 30th, which was agreed upon. Everyone in Hogwarts was looking forward to waiting for Bus Barton and Durmstrang's personnel to arrive. They didn't even think about the lessons. The little wizards sitting by the window frequently looked out the window, but there of Mithlime, nothing at all. What disappointed Harry was that Snape's potions class was still going on as usual. The only difference was that the get-out-of-class time was half an hour earlier, so they could leave earlier and suffer less torture. When the bell rang for the end of Get Out of Class, the little wizards were very excited one by one. They rushed back to the lounge as quickly as possible to put their things in and lined up to wait in the hall. Chapter 583 When Ivan and others arrived, the hall was already full of people, and the prefects and filch of the various colleges were working hard to maintain order. Don't be crowded. Line up. Professor McGonagall shouted loudly, then turned his eyes to Ron and Parvati and reprimanded harshly. Weasley, get me your hat upright, and Miss Petal, you have to remove that ridiculous thing from your hair. 
Ron hurriedly fiddled with his hat. Parvati frowned unhappily, but still took a large butterfly headdress from the braid. Professor McGonagall then corrected a few disheveled senior students, then looked at the crowd and spoke. Okay, everyone follow me. The first-year classmates walk in the front. Under the leadership of McGonagall, everyone quickly lined up and stood on the large lawn in front of the castle. It was the end of October, and it was the evening, and the weather gradually became colder. From time to time, a cold wind blew by slowly, and several thinly dressed little wizards shivered. But a little bit of cold wind didn't affect everyone's enthusiasm at all. Everyone looked eagerly toward the distant lane, or discussed in a low voice. Even if the prefect repeatedly scolded them, they couldn't calm them down. It's almost six o'clock? How do you think they will come? Do you take the train like us, or use a flying broom? Ron glanced at his watch and asked expectantly. It may also be the door key or the apparition, after all, it is so far, Harry guessed. He remembered that in the Quidditch World Cup before, spectators from various countries used the door key to arrive. Apparition can also have the same effect if the students of Booth Batten and Durmstrang can perform this magic smoothly. It can't be apparition. I saw in a school history at Hogwarts that anti-apparition magic was applied near the castle, Hermione retorted, and then she didn't know what she thought of, and continued with dissatisfaction. Only the magic of house elves will not be restricted. They can walk freely in the castle, so as to provide services to the wizards who live here. Seeing that Hermione was about to mention slave labor again, Harry and Ron quickly turned their faces away and pretended not to hear them. Ivan also hurriedly changed the subject, pointing to the distance. Don't quarrel, look over there, it should be Bus Barton's people here. Hermione was stunned. When even looking in the direction Ivan was pointing, they faintly saw a black spot appearing on the horizon. What's that? A group of eagle-headed horses with wings? Harry squinted hard to see clearly, but the distance was so far, he couldn't see clearly, he could only guess. The little wizards around this meeting also noticed the abnormality in the sky, and they raised their heads and looked at it. The black spots on the horizon are getting bigger and bigger. Gradually, everyone clearly sees a behemoth passing through the clouds, flying over the forbidden forest and rushing towards this side. Gosh, what did I see? A castle is flying in the sky. A first-year freshman screamed in astonishment. Idiot, it is obviously a carriage, a flying carriage, Ron retorted excitedly. Just under everyone's gaze, the behemoth has flown above them. It was a pink-blue carriage the size of a house, with many ornate decorations hanging on it. There was also a badge printed on the door, which looked like two golden crossed wands. Twelve winged silver bristles pulled it into the air. These horses look very majestic, their pupils are blood red, and they are pulling the carriage down quickly. A large shadow enveloped the students below. The little wizards standing in the front row hurriedly backed up a few steps to avoid being hit, but before they could stand still, the ground shook abruptly. A huge carriage landed less than a meter in front of them. Then, the door of the car was opened, and a boy in a light blue robe jumped out of the carriage, fumbled, and opened a golden spiral staircase. And then a middle-aged witch with luxurious makeup walked out of the quim. R. Come out. When saw her, the students present couldn't help but sucked in a cold breath. Even Ivan was no exception. Because this witch is too tall, Compared with the old professor standing at the front, Ivan thinks she is as tall as two Dumbledores. Among all the people Ivan had met, only Hagrid could compete with this witch in terms of height. Hybrid giant? Ivan thought of the words of Hagrid in the original time and space. Although the headmistress of Booth Batten, Miss Maxim, firmly denied this, it seems that it should be. Normal people are unlikely to grow so tall. You must know that, that the tallest person in the Muggle world is not more than three meters tall, but Hagrid and Maxim are more than four meters tall. As a wizard who also acquired the blood of a magical creature, Ivan is somewhat interested in Maxim. He knew too little about the bloodline. It was entirely dependent on the origin of bloodline and many notes left by Slytherin to gain some understanding. So Ivan thinks maybe I can find a breakthrough here in maxim.mtlnovel.com but judging from the other's tall body, Maxim's experience should be similar to Hagrid's situation. 
probably parents and giants. It took some close relationships to create such a hybrid giant. In the description of The Origin of Bloodline, it is regarded as the lowest method to obtain bloodline. Most of the aliens produced in this way are caused by accidents. After all, few wizards will relish the taste to this point. He, Tom Riddle, and a certain ancestor of the Dumbledore family used more high-end techniques, using potions, contracts, and other means to seize the power of magical creatures and turn them into use. Just when Ivan was distracted, Dumbledore greeted him with a smile and chatted with Ms. Maxim. In the huge carriage behind them, more than a dozen students walked down. They were all about 18 or 9 years old. Most of them were girls, all of them gorgeous and wearing gorgeous silk robes. Ivan stared at them, trying to find the legendary mixed-blood veal. It's just that a few girls from Busbarton wrapped their heads in scarves and turbans. Ivan didn't know who Fleur was, but saw her sister Gabrielle. Because this little girl is young and short, so obvious in the crowd. Are you looking for something? Ivan? Hermione suddenly interrupted Ivan's thoughts, her lips pouted, her face not looking pretty. Look at the excitement. This is the first time I have seen students from other wizarding schools. Ivan smiled, turned his head back, and replied freely. Chapter 584. Is that so? Hermione glanced suspiciously at Ivan, but didn't say anything, because the other little wizards were also curiously looking there. After Ms. Maxim talked with Dumbledore, she left the carriage and took the students of Boothbatten to the castle to rest. Hogwarts professors and students continued to wait for Durmstrang's personnel to arrive. The sky gradually darkened, and the cold wind became more and more bitter. Just when Ivan and others were a little impatient, a strange voice was faintly coming from a distance. The sound sounded like someone was beating a drum that leaked, accompanied by a slight sucking sound. Ah! It seems that Karkaroff has finally arrived, Dumbledore shouted happily. Where is it? Ron looked around, then up to the sky, but there was nothing nearby. Ivan stared at the black lake closely. The surface of the originally calm lake suddenly became restless at this moment. A huge spray was turned up, and the waves hit the wet lake shore. A large whirlpool appeared in the center of the black lake. A thing that looked like a flagpole was slowly rising from the center of the whirlpool, followed by the high-flying sails. The last huge sailboat rushed directly out of the water, splashing everywhere. The splash is like a light rain. Ivan looked up at it. The exterior of the ship looked very old, even a bit dilapidated, like the remains of a sunken ship that had just been salvaged. On the portholes, you can see the misty dim light shining in the dark. If there are a few more skeleton pirates on the deck, it will be almost like the ghost ship in the Muggle story. As we sailed all the way, within a few minutes, the big boat slowly stopped on the shore of the lake. With a muffled noise, a solid wooden board stretched out from the boat and landed on the shore of the lake. A group of tall and mighty wizards walked down from the ship along the wooden planks. They were uniformly dressed in thick fur cloaks, covering their bodies, and they took off their hoods one after another until they got closer. Headed by a tall and thin old wizard, he has short white hair, a thin chin with a small curly goatee, and a pair of cold and sharp eyes, but when he is near Dumbledore, they showed exceptional enthusiasm. Meet again, my dear old buddy. How are you doing? How are you? The old wizard laughed and stretched out his hand. His voice was round and sweet. I'm fine. Thank you, Professor Karkaroff. Dumbledore reached out and shook his hand. Karkaroff shook his hand for a few seconds before releasing it, turning his head to look at the towering Hogwarts castle, and said with emotion, Ah, Hogwarts, it's great here. I regret not coming sooner. It's not too late, isn't it? You have to stay here for several months so you can go shopping, Dumbledore said with a smile. Yes, this year's Triwizard Tournament is going to be going on for a long time. Karkaroff nodded, and then he slapped his head and turned to look at the students behind him. Oh, having said that, I almost forgot. Wiktor, come here, get warm, don't be cold. A 17 or 18-year-old boy came out of Demstrang's students. He looked very sturdy, with the coat of arms of the Bulgarian team painted on his cloak. Don't you mind, Dumbledore? Victor has a bit of a cold recently. I can't let him stay outside in such a cold place for too long. Karkaroff's words were full of apologetics, but his face was full of apologies. 
it is showing a little complacency. Before Dumbledore could reply, the little wizards at Hogwarts began to commotion. Many people recognized the boy, the legendary seeker crumb of the Bulgarian team, a world-class Quidditch star. God, Harry, Ivan, Hermione, it's crumb, he's at Hogwarts, am I right? Seeing the idol just standing in front of him, Ron was so excited that he tried hard. He shook Harry's arm beside him in a terrible way, and the words were a bit incoherent. I didn't expect Crumb to be a student. His skills are so good, Ron murmured added. I know it's Crumb. Harry reluctantly pushed Ron's hand away. He admitted that Crumb's skills are very good, but it doesn't have to be this way, right? Ivan also looked at Ron in surprise, unable to understand his behavior but thought of Lockhart in the second grade and stopped talking. There were so many crazy people back then. There are not a few little wizards like Ron. Many little wizards are excited to see Crumb. Several senior girls complain about why they don't bring pen and paper with them. If that's the case, you can do it later. Go up to sign the first time. Such remarks were naturally heard by Karkaroff, and the smile on his face suddenly became stronger. Crumb didn't respond much, he had experienced too many occasions like this, and he was used to it a long time ago. Very good, I read the report of that game, you played very well. Dumbledore looked at Crumb and said admiringly. Cultivating a 17 or 18 year old world class star is indeed something to show off, and he is not surprised that Karkaroff would specifically mention it in front of him. It's just a pity, I remember the Bulgarian team finally lost the whole game. Dumbledore put on a regretful look. It's very bad, Karkaroff emphasized and complained dissatisfied. And this is not to blame Crum, he has done well. The Bulgarian team will definitely replace those unqualified players next time, and they will definitely win the championship by then. That's true, I'm here to congratulate Crum in advance. Dumbledore just smiled. Karkaroff raised his eyebrows triumphantly, and even Crum showed a smile. Dumbledore was known as the strongest white wizard in England, and it was natural to be happy to be praised by him. However, before they were happy for long, Dumbledore continued. By the way, I think there should be more exchanges between outstanding students. Krum also needs some friends at Hogwarts, so please let me introduce you. Hulse. Dumbledore turned his gaze to the Hogwarts team and found Ivan. Ivan, who was watching the excitement, suddenly heard his name with a dazed expression, but was stared at by Dumbledore, he quickly reacted. She Shiran walked out of the queue, looked at Karkaroff, and spoke politely, said, Hello, Principal Karkaroff. Seeing Ivan who came by, Karkaroff's eyes narrowed, and his face became a little unsightly, but he still pulled out a smile, patted Ivan on the shoulder, and spoke, Ah, I know you, Mr. Halls, I can hear your name in Durmstrang. Crumb next to him is also looking at Ivan, the happy expression on his face has been put away, and it has turned very dignified. He knew very well that his task was arduous. He needed to represent Demstrand overwhelming Hogwarts and Boothbatten, winning the Trewizard Tournament and establishing Demstrang's reputation. But Crumb has also read the Nordic Times report and knows that Ivan is the Merlin Medal winner, and the gold content of this heavy identity is higher than that of his well-known Quidditch player. Although all the thoughts in his mind drifted away, Crumb looked personable on the surface. He took the initiative to step forward and said hello. Hello, Halls. It's nice to meet you. I saw a report about you in a column, and it said you got a second-level Merlin medal, right? Hearing this, Ivan's face became a little embarrassed. Sorry, Crumb, Principal Karkaroff, I think your information may be wrong, Ivan said hesitantly. Is it a report error? Crumb was stunned and asked subconsciously, and he was even more relieved. Karkaroff's expression also eased a lot. He smiled and said comfortingly, Haha, it doesn't matter. I understand the nature of those newspapers. They always exaggerate things habitually. No, Principal Karkaroff, I mean your news is out of date. I am now the winner of the Merlin Medal of the First Class, Ivan corrected. Professor Karkaroff's smiling face suddenly froze, and there was no response for a long time. Yes, is it? That's really amazing. Crumb also stammered for a long time, and the words seemed to be squeezed out of his mouth abruptly. Wait, Albus, I remember that the first class Merlin medal will be awarded to wizards who have made significant contributions to the magical world. How could they, how could they be given to a 14-year-old child? Karkaroff, 
somewhat unbelievable, he suspects there is an inside story. Yes, because of Halls, the Merlin Knights made a rare exception, Dumbledore said with emotion, and after a pause he continued, because he not only researched out the wolf's poison potion that can keep the werewolves sober, but also solved a big problem in the magic world, wwmtlnovel.com, he also caught a Death Eater who had been hidden for many years at the end of the school year. By the way, I corrected a major mistake made by the Ministry of Magic. When talking about Death Eaters, Dumbledore deliberately increased his tone. Karkaroff's face changed. Ivan's thoughts moved, and then he remembered that Karkaroff was also a Death Eater, or that kind of traitor who betrayed Voldemort in the Great Trial more than ten years ago, and provided a large list of Death Eaters. Thinking of this, Ivan mumbled to himself that Dumbledore was not an ordinary bad, digging into other people's pain points. On the bright side, Ivan was polite and polite. He sighed and said very modestly, Actually, I just did some small work, which is really ashamed. The corners of Karkaroff's mouth twitched, and Dumbledore looked at him playfully, waiting for Karkaroff's response. Karkaroff opened his mouth, trying to say something, but in the end he closed it again, and it took a long time to say a word from his mouth. The wind is a bit strong today. Let's get in the house quickly. Chapter 585 Of course, this is my negligence. Dumbledore laughed and didn't mean to embarrass Karkaroff, so he called the students around to line up and return to the castle together. Ivan realized that his tool was useless, so he returned to the Hogwarts queue and followed everyone to the auditorium. Along the way, Ron was like a chicken blood, talking endlessly about Crumb's great achievements, and looked at Ivan with envy and asked, Ivan, how did I feel when I saw you talking to Crumb? Well, how do you say? It's kind of polite. Yifan raised his eyebrows and replied perfunctorily. In the previous confrontation, Krum was speechless but not irritated into anger by him, indicating that the restraint is okay, at least without the bad habits that are used to it. Really? You think so too? Ron was pleasantly surprised, as if he had found a common topic, and said incessantly, There are not many celebrities as approachable as Krum. If only I could chat with him, he might be willing to send me a signed photo. Hermione on the side really couldn't stand it, and could not help but argued. You are wrong, Ron. There are a lot of approachable celebrities. There are two in front of you, and you are still friends with them. Naturally, Hermione was talking about Ivan and Harry. One of them is the youngest first-class Merlin medal winner, and the other is the savior of the British magical world. I don't know where it is higher than that Quidditch star. That, that's different. Ron's face flushed red, and he was hesitant for a long time, but he couldn't tell the difference. He had to deflect the words bluntly and brag. I bet that wizards all over the world know Crumb. He is so famous. Ivan didn't bother to pay attention to Ron at all. It was undoubtedly foolish to reason with a fanatical person, and he would not degenerate to compare with Crumb. However, Ivan soon discovered that there are not a few little wizards as fanatical as Ron. For example, Lee Jordan, who has been a Quidditch interpreter for many years, saw Crumb jump up and down excitedly, and he said nothing, I don't know, thought he had just gotten lost. The few young witches next to him looked at Crumb's eyes with glare, wishing that the whole person would stick to Crumb's body. Such a scene made Ivan feel a little curious, and logically he was a celebrity. Why did he never meet his admirer in school? Is it because the distance is too close and there is no way to reinforce the deification? Still lack that sense of mystery. Of course, Ivan thinks this is also a good thing, without those unnecessary troubles. Just as he was thinking about it, a system prompt sounded in his mind. Ding, a new mission has been generated. Hearing this familiar voice, a bad foreboding arose in Ivan's heart. He hurriedly opened the taskbar and looked at it. As expected, there was one more unfinished task on it. Task, Fanatic Family's Mission. Objective, have more than 100 followers in Hogwarts. Task Progress Task Reward, Legendary Value 2. Task Description. After initially controlling Knockoff Alley, you turn your gaze to this thousand-year-old castle. The boring study life cannot satisfy your growing ambitions. You urgently need to gather enough believers in this castle to declare your evil ideas. Note. 
you clearly realize that controlling 100 little wizards is equivalent to controlling 100 wizard families. Ivan took a few glances and tried to calm his emotions. After understanding the general content of the task, he closed the system panel. He wanted to pretend that he had never seen this mission, but after all, he couldn't help but complain. Am I that evil? Thinking about the system tasks he had triggered over the years, Ivan couldn't help but fell into deep thought and finally felt that there must be something wrong with this system so that he misunderstood his own character. In addition, the four clusters displayed on the task progress also made Ivan somewhat curious. He had never noticed the existence of these clusters before. Who can that be? Ivan turned his head and saw Ron next to him and eliminated him first, because Ron could only be a crowd of crumb. Then, Ivan looked at Harry and Hermione again. After thinking about it, I thought they were unlikely. After all, the two were friends with himself, which did not fit the description of the fanatical crowd. Could it be the camera boy Colin and the bard Siamis? How about two more people? While thinking in his mind, Ivan stepped into the auditorium, found a place at the long table in Gryffindor, and sat down. Ron was sitting on the side facing the door, and very deliberately left a space beside him. Because Crum and his Durmstrang alumni gathered at the door, they seemed to be hesitating about where to sit. They also looked over here, to be precise, looked at Ivan and Hermione, but Ron stubbornly thought that Crum was looking at himself. However, it turns out that Ron was just whimsical, and Crum finally went to the Slytherin seat after discussing it with others. Malfoy and his two followers looked very happy and welcomed Crum's arrival. Crum didn't refuse their kindness, so they sat beside them and talked with them. After seeing this scene, Ron was furious. He felt that Malfoy must have fooled Crum to make the other party change his attention. I dare say that it won't be long before Crum can see what Malfoy is, and now he must be arguing. Ron said harshly, then turned his head to look at Harry, discussed with him where these new students will live. You, reading www.youcanshu.com. If there are not enough beds, we can add a bed to Crum in our dormitory, Harry. I can even let him sleep in my bed, or I can sleep together. I mean, if Crum doesn't, if you mind. Ron spoke with excitement but he didn't notice that Harry was quietly shifting his position next to him, leaning against Ivan. Harry had some doubts whether something was wrong with Ron's sexual orientation. In this noisy atmosphere, all the little wizards sat down at the long tables in their respective colleges. The Busbarton students also made an early decision, choosing to stay with the little wizards of Ravenclaw. When they saw Dumbledore with Karkaroff and Maxim passing by, they all stood up and bowed together until Maxim sat down in the main guest seat before they sat down again. After everyone was seated, Dumbledore strode to the front of the stage, where he stood, looking around. Under the cover of unspeakable pressure, the noisy auditorium quickly quieted down. Chapter 5 and 86 A group of little wizards stared at Dumbledore on the stage, and Ivan was no exception. In particular, he knew that Dumbledore had been involved in the Horcrux conspiracy, and now it was highly probable that he was hanging by a potion, so he expressed concern about the physical condition of the old professor. But I don't know if it was an illusion. Ivan found that Dumbledore's breath was not weakened at all. It even became stronger than before. The magical power emitted by accident was enough to shock everyone in the auditorium. Is it back to light? Ivan thought silently in his mind. On the stage, Dumbledore's eyes swept across the auditorium, and then he said with a smile, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, ghosts, and of course, our guests. I welcome you to Hogwarts with great joy. Following Dumbledore's opening, the pressure spreading in the auditorium disappeared without a trace, and Ivan and others breathed a sigh of relief. The faces of Booth Barton and Durmstrang's students were not very good-looking, and they all agreed that Dumbledore deliberately gave them a slap in the face. A girl from Booth Barton let out a sneered sneer. Dumbledore continued to give his congratulatory speech only as if he hadn't heard it. After a few minutes, he entered the topic. The selection of the warriors for the Triwizard Tournament will officially begin at the end of the banquet. As for now, I think what you need more is to roast and eat. Dumbledore said multilaterally, waving his wand in the air, lightly in. 
The blazing flames in the fireplace rose up, and the billowing heat wave dissipated the severe cold of the night. The students who had waited for several hours in the cold wind before felt shocked. Then, on the long table of the four colleges, discs appeared out of thin air, filled with all kinds of rich delicacies. Different from the past, Ivan was surprised to find that there were a lot of unseen delicacies on the table, probably French and Nordic dishes, probably to satisfy the students of Boothbatten and Durmstrang. Ivan tried to eat too, and it felt pretty good. The house elves had nothing to say about their cooking skills. The warm indoor environment, coupled with the food on the table, succeeded in releasing the tension and alertness of the foreign students who have just arrived. Durmstrang's students took off the fur cloaks outside one after another, revealing their sturdy physique and the blood-red school robe. The Busbarton girls also unwrapped the scarves that covered their hair hoods or part of their faces and began to enjoy their dinner. But this caused some minor disturbances, because after one of the girls took off her scarf, the students in Ravenclaw next to her were startled, and many boys stared at her fascinatingly. Some people were even so fascinated that they accidentally knocked down a goblet full of drinks. The drink was directly spilled on the bodies of several students nearby, and several screams suddenly sounded from the seats in Ravenclaw. The Booth Barton girl couldn't help covering her mouth and laughed when she saw this scene. Under the gaze of everyone, she talked with a few girls freely and seemed to enjoy this much-anticipated feeling. The sudden scream also caused more people to turn their eyes, and Ivan naturally did the same. Although he had never seen him before, but after a glance towards that side, Ivan found the mixed-blood Miss Veva in the crowd, Fleur Delacour. Ivan looked at each other curiously. In terms of appearance, Ferron can only be regarded as a good-looking girl, but the magic is that she has a special temperament, like a magnet, which makes people unable to move. Open your eyes. Ron on the side was even more staring, staring at Fleur in a daze, without even hearing Harry calling his name. I don't know what we're talking about, Fleur, who is at the long table in Ravenclaw, suddenly looked over here, staring at Ivan for a while, and the azure blue eyes were very bright. When he found that Ivan was looking at him at the moment, Ferong couldn't to help but smiled, revealing a mouthful of white and neat teeth. Oh my God, she's looking at me. Ron's excited voice was a little out of tune. When Furong's gaze was swept across, his body trembled constantly. Oh, this is a heartbeat feeling. Within a few seconds, Ron's mind was full of thoughts, especially when he saw Fleur smiling at him. Ron even thought of the names of his children in the future. However, Furong's eyes did not stay on them for long and soon turned to look at Hufflepuff's academy table. Ivan noticed that she was looking at Cedric. Ron also noticed this, his face flushed red, and his heart was very uncomfortable, as if his beloved goddess suddenly moved to fall in love. Is she so good-looking? A voice suddenly rang in their ears. Ivan turned her head and saw Hermione staring at her with her mouth pursed. She used a knife and fork to poke several holes in the stake in front of her. Ah, you mean the Booth Batten girl? Hmm, just so-so. Ivan coughed slightly and said with a calm expression. Hermione's face looked better now, but before she could speak, the average Ron couldn't help but exclaimed. No, Ivan? You actually think she looks pretty? I've never seen such a beautiful girl. There is no such girl in Hogwarts. Ivan rolled his eyes, disagreeing with Ron's words. However, Viva's temperament bonus was really powerful, and even him was slightly affected just now. Ivan looked around and found that most of the little wizards in the auditorium were affected. He stared at Furong. Only a few dozen wizards were not affected too much. Mnolnovel.com For example, Cedric of Hufflepuff, after looking at each other with Fleur, just raised the goblet and gestured to the other party. Another example is Harry. Although he is also staring at Ravenclaw's long table, he is obviously looking at Cho Chang. She smiled at me just now. Ron still immersed himself in Furong's charm, recalling that smile, he thought he could remember it for a lifetime. Don't be silly, Ron. She's not looking at you. Hermione interrupted Ron's fantasies directly. She looked back at Fleur and saw that the other party looked away from Cedric, as she expected, opened, looked at some of Durmstrang's students, and added, She just wants to know who her opponent will be. Ivan also nodded, 
As Bus Barton's almost scheduled contestant, it is normal for Fleur to ask the students of Ravenclaw for information. The most famous little wizard in Hogwarts is himself, which is probably the reason why the other party looks at him. But because of his age, Fleur probably thinks he is unlikely to be selected, so he will look at Cedric. Chapter 587 Hermione's remarks did not break Ron's beautiful illusions. He still stubbornly thought that Fleur might have some kind of affection for him. Halfway through the banquet, the door of the auditorium was opened again, and two wizards in suits walked in from outside. They walked all the way to the high platform, shook hands with Dumbledore, and then sat on the teacher's bench without attracting too many people's attention. But Ivan was obviously the exception, staring at them when the two came in. Mr. Bagman and Mr. Crouch, what are they doing here? Harry also glanced strangely there. Which of them is Crouch? Ivan asked. He remembered that in the original time and space, Barty Crouch was controlled by the imperious curse released by Voldemort himself. In the current situation of all wireless cables, Crouch may be a good breakthrough. The tall, thin, and thin man with gray hair is Crouch, and the other is Ludo Bagman. It was not Harry that explained to Ivan, but Ron. He finally moved his gaze away from Furong, probably because Furong hadn't responded to his affectionate gaze for so long. Ivan nodded and looked at the faculty seat again. At this time, Crouch was sitting beside Dumbledore and chatting with the old professor very happily, almost nothing strange on the surface. However, Ivan knew that the imperious curse could control a wizard almost perfectly, so that his words and deeds were the same as usual. There are only two flaws in this magic. First, it will be noticed by the clever master Panthera. As long as you search the other's memory, you can find something wrong. The second is that wizards with strong willpower may break free of the spell on their own. For example, Barty Crouch and his son in the original time and space have successfully achieved this. The reason why I can understand it so comprehensively is because Ivan had studied the Imperious Curse for a period of time in order to control Knot when he was in Nocturne Alley. The first flaw, in Ivan's opinion, cannot be solved at all. Fortunately, the number of psychic wizards is scarce, as long as he controls Knot's house to reduce going out. It's easy to get rid of it by yourself. In order to prevent Knot from getting out of trouble, Ivant arranged for two werewolf wizards to stare at him at all times and regularly strengthen Knot's imperious curse. Thinking about this, Ivan quickly got into trouble again. Although he suspected that Crouch was an undercover undercover under Voldemort's control, he did not have enough evidence to prove him. Knowing that Crouch is the head of the International Magic Exchange and Cooperation Department, with a high position and a reputation for being upright, Dumbledore has a high degree of trust in him. And with his own butterfly, the real Moody has appeared in the school. Whether Crouch is controlled by Voldemort like the original time and space is unknown. If you make a mistake, it is no joke. The power of Imperius is that Voldemort may control anyone in this school. The only solution is for Dumbledore in the auditorium to read everyone's memory with the idea of dementia and to distinguish who are normal people and which are controlled undercover agents. It's just that according to the old professor's character, it is obviously impossible to do so without a last resort. Ivan kind of wanted to distinguish by himself, but his panic was far from reaching such a level. He estimated that at least he would have to raise his mind to level six in order to explore the minds of most people without knowing it. Just as Ivan was thinking about it, Dumbledore, who had had a few conversations with Crouch, stood up and walked to the front of the stage again. Everyone, I think you have eaten and drank enough, right? Dumbledore's loud voice echoed in the auditorium. The little wizards present put down their knives and forks one after another. Although some foodies wanted to continue to enjoy the food, they looked forward to what Dumbledore said next. It looks like it's time. Dumbledore saw the XP, rations of everyone, and he waved his wand again, and the messy long table returned to its original neat appearance. Dumbledore continued. Next, I will talk about the arrangement of the Triwizard Tournament. Listening to the old professor mentioning the Triwizard Tournament, everyone was sitting in full jeopardy, and a feeling of excitement and tension gradually spread in the auditorium. 
Dumbledore turned his voice, pointed to Crouch on his right, and introduced. Please allow me to introduce two new guests to you first. There may be people who do not know them. This is Mr. Barty Crouch, Director of the Department of International Cooperation at the Ministry of Magic. Crouch nodded at the crowd, and there was sparse applause in the auditorium. Dumbledore then introduced Ludo Bagman on the left to everyone and thanked the two for their hard work in reopening the Triwizard Tournament over the past few months. They will join me, Professor Karkaroff and Miss Maxim, to form a five-member jury to judge the performance of the Warriors. Dumbledore spoke, clapped his hands again, and asked Filch to take the box up. What box? Harry lowered his voice and asked curiously. Ivan knew the inside story, but he still looked towards Filch. Perhaps to participate in this important occasion, Filch, who is usually undressed, tidied it up and at least put on a new robe. He was holding a large wooden box inlaid with jewels in both hands, with a solemn expression, as if he was holding it, like a noble holy thing. The little wizards craned their necks curiously, www.tlnovel.com want to see more clearly. Dumbledore continued. Each item in this year's Tri-Wizard Tournament has been carefully reviewed by us. It is divided into three items. We will examine the abilities of the warriors from various aspects, such as their magical abilities, whether they have extraordinary courage and meticulous reasoning ability. After each event is over, the referees will give corresponding scores based on their performance. The points obtained in the three competitions are added together, and the warrior with the highest score will win the top three cup. As for the selection process of the warriors. While Dumbledore was speaking, Filch had already walked to the high platform and carefully placed the box on the table in front of him. Dumbledore drew out his wand and tapped it three times on the lid of the box. The box opened slowly, and a wooden goblet that had been cut very rough appeared in front of everyone. Dumbledore pointed at it with his magic wand, looked at everyone present, and spoke word by word. The selection process of the warriors will be carried out by the most impartial selection. It is the Goblet of Fire. Following Dumbledore's words, a large amount of blue and white flames gushed out from the mouth of the cup. Chapter 588 The flames suddenly rising from the mouth of the cup shocked the little wizards in the front row. Dumbledore continued to speak and continued to speak. Practitioners who want to run for the warriors, please write your name and school name on a piece of parchment after the banquet and throw them into the Goblet of Fire. I will give you 24 hours to think about it and decide whether to run for the election. At this time tomorrow, the Goblet of Fire will select three from all the candidates, which it thinks best represents the three major schools. Warrior As for tonight, I will leave this cup in the hall so that you can touch it. Dumbledore talked freely, talking about various precautions for selecting the warriors, and then specifically mentioned that this year's warriors candidates have age restrictions, and students under the age of 17 are not allowed to participate. After speaking, Dumbledore looked at the audience again and asked, That's probably all I have to say. Any of you have any questions? If not, then the banquet tonight is over. At this moment, a voice rang. Professor, how exactly does the Goblet of Fire select the warriors, and what are the specific criteria? How to ensure that it will select the best students? Dumbledore turned his head and looked in the direction of the voice, and found that the questioner was Ivan. However, the other little wizards were also very interested in this question. Although no one asked directly like Ivan as boldly as Ivan, they all fixed their eyes on Dumbledore waiting for his answer. This is a very complicated process involving many aspects, Dumbledore explained in a vague tone. What I can tell you is that in the past, the places in the Triwizard Tournament were also determined by the Goblet of Fire. Facts have proved that the warriors selected each time are enough to convince the crowd. I think this should prove its reliability. However, this did not convince Ivan. He continued to ask. If it is true as you said, the Goblet of Fire will automatically select the most outstanding students, then why do you limit the age of the contestants? If a lower grade student is selected, doesn't it prove that this student is better than those higher grade students and is more suitable to be a warrior? Ivan has always been surprised at this. 
Wizards over the age of 17 are basically graduates, and their strength is strong. But who can guarantee that the little wizards in the 5th and 6th grades will have any genius? For example, Snape created the powerful spell of Shen Feng Wuying in the 5th grade, and Tom Riddle, who was the same age, had a spellcasting level comparable to that of the elite Auror. From the perspective of protecting the contestants, the so-called age limit is totally unnecessary. The question Ivan throws is like throwing a boulder on the surface of a calm lake. For a while, the auditorium becomes lively, and many little wizards who are dissatisfied with this rule are talking in private, and their voices are getting louder and louder. George and Fred even yelled that they were no worse than senior graduates, demanding that the age limit be removed and a fair and just selection would come. Quiet! Dumbledore raised his hand and blessed himself with a loud voice curse. The next moment, a thunderous voice overwhelmed everyone's noise. When the auditorium slowly recovered calm, Dumbledore explained, Regarding the age limit, I can answer you now. That's because the Ministry of Magic and our referees agree that adult wizards over the age of 17 will be more capable to complete the three high-intensity challenges. Especially, they are sober enough to be responsible for every decision they make. While speaking, Dumbledore deliberately emphasized words such as adult and responsible. Ivan suddenly understood that both the Ministry of Magic and the school wanted to shirk responsibility as much as possible. After all, 17 years old in the magic world means that the wizard has grown up and has the e right to make decisions on his own. In addition, he is willing to participate in the competition. Even if he accidentally died on the field, he said that the past will not cause too bad influence. It would be different if it were replaced by a minor wizard. Once an error occurs, the officials who prompted the reopening of the Tree Wizard Tournament are likely to be held accountable. Angry people don't care whether the other party is willing or not. In their opinion, underage wizards have no ability to measure danger at all. Although I understand this, Ivan still bit his scalp and asked the last question in order to successfully participate in the competition to obtain legendary points. Professor Dumbledore, if an underage wizard puts his name into the cup, will the Goblet of Fire recognize it? Dumbledore's expression became very serious. This is what I just want to remind you, that the Triwizard Tournament is not a trifle. Don't take part in it rashly. Once the name you put into the Goblet of Fire is selected, and you become the warrior representing this school, then there will be a contract between the Goblet of Fire and you that must be abided by. All warriors must stick to the end and complete the game. There is an option to regret. Dumbledore did not answer Ivan's question head-on, but the little wizards in the audience understood it. This meant that the Goblet of Fire did not tell whether the contestants were adults or not. The students in the lower grades would also have the same if they put their names in them. Possibility to participate. This is awesome! George and Fred embraced excitedly as if they saw the 1,000-gallon bonus beckoning to them. The other little wizards who are interested in participating, but who suffer from insufficient age, also cheered, as if they have been successfully elected to the warriors. .mtlnovel.com Kakarov and Maxim in the VIP seats are I frowned. This is different from what I said before. They couldn't help wondering if Dumbledore had temporarily changed his mind so that the talented wizard at Hogwarts could play. Just as the two were about to refute, Dumbledore suddenly raised his left hand and waved his wand. A string of golden flames burned around the table. Everyone didn't understand what Dumbledore was doing. When the flames dissipated, they found an extra circle of thin gold lines on the ground with a radius of about ten feet, enclosing the goblet of fire. Dumbledore pointed to the line in the surprised eyes of everyone and stayed for a long time on George, Fred, and others, before finally looking at Ivan and said emphatically, In order to prevent underage students from not being able to withstand the temptation, I arranged an age line around the Goblet of Fire. Anyone under the age of 17 cannot cross it, so I implore some of you to give up all the thoughts in your mind. There is no need to waste your energy. Chapter 589 After setting up this age line, Dumbledore officially announced that today's dinner is over. Before leaving, 
Karkaroff and Maxim looked at Dumbledore's magic without worry, until they confirmed that the effect of the age line was the same as the old professor said, and it was so powerful that they couldn't break it. Leave with confidence. As soon as the principals left, the auditorium suddenly became very noisy and everyone was talking about the goblet of fire placed on the high platform and the candidates for the warriors. I was still thinking about the person responsible for selecting the warriors this morning. It would be bad if Professor Dumbledore would choose the person himself. I didn't expect it to be just an age line. Fred's eyes flashed, full of confidence said he thought it was impossible for a rigid identification magic to stop him. Yes, it seems that the aging agent we prepared in advance is going to work. George was also very happy. Fortunately, he made a bottle of aging agent a few days ago. Prepare, it must be too late. After being happy for a while, the two did not forget to share their joy with Ivan. I don't think it would be easy to cross the age line set by the professor. Seeing the excitement of the two brothers, even euphemistically exhorted them, they bumped their heads and added a lot of beards. Really? Then wait and see tomorrow. This method will work. George and Fred ignored Ivan's remarks and said confidently. They thought Ivan would not use this method. One less competitor. Ivan shook his head secretly and stopped talking to persuade. Anyway, Dumbledore didn't attach any destructive magic to the age line. Even if the attempt failed, it would be a bit of a pain. Thinking of this, Ivan turned his head and glanced at the goblet of fire placed on the high platform. He had some ideas to break the age limit. I don't know if it will work, but thinking about it, Ivan didn't plan to start trying immediately. There are too many people here now, and if his method is successful, it will inevitably cause others to follow suit which is equivalent to slap Dumbledore in the face in public know that the old professor has just finished F.G. Ivan wondered whether it would be better to sneak over in the middle of the night so that no one would see it in case of failure. Let's go. Don't look. Let's go back to the lounge. Based on this, Ivan pulled Hermione up along with Harry and Ron, who were obsessed with the Goblet of Fire, left the auditorium and walked towards the Gryffindor lounge. Along the way, Harry and Ron were discussing how to break through the age line set by Dumbledore. They thought that if George's method was useful, they could try it themselves at that time. When approaching the entrance of the lounge, Ron still curiously asked if Ivan had any good ideas. Who knows, I don't have any clues yet, maybe I will think of a way in a while. Ivan shrugged and said half-truth. Then if you think of any solution, remember to tell me. Ron said distressedly, and he thought he might have nothing to do. Harry was more shy, not embarrassed to speak like Ron, but his eyes were fixed on Ivan. Have you forgotten? What I can do doesn't mean you can do it. Ivan said helplessly, glancing at them. Harry and Ron opened their mouths to say something, but when they recalled their previous defense against the dark arts class homework, they shut up. Ivan, Harry, Ron, don't waste your time. Professor Dumbledore said that it is impossible to cross that line under the age of 17. Hermione couldn't help but interrupt. Several people's discussion. Compared with Harry and the others, who fantasizes about winning the triple finals, which will bring glory and bonuses, the little witch is keenly aware of the dangers of this game. Especially when she heard that many people died in the Triwizard Tournament in previous years, Hermione felt even more disturbed. Although she knew that Ivan had a high level of magic, she was still a little worried. Now that Ivan is okay, e'en to be a warrior, Hermione naturally wants to stop it. It was so noisy and arguing for a long time, and when they returned to their respective dormitories, they stopped a bit. By the way, Ron, don't you like Crumb and Fleur? Then you plan to compete? When I was about to go to bed, Ivan suddenly thought of something, looked at Ron curiously, and asked, Furong? Who is that? Ron didn't answer for a moment, but asked strangely. Hermione wasn't there, and Ivan didn't bother to pretend not to understand Fleur's appearance, and said casually, Of course it is the girl from Boothbatten. I asked someone to find out. It seems that she should be a mixed-blood Viva. Viva? I knew it. No wonder she was so pretty. Ron muttered to himself. However, after a brief stupefaction, Ron quickly recovered. He looked at Ivan and said hesitantly, Even if I like Fu... What does liking Crumb have to do with me being a warrior? 
I think they should be the best students of Booth Batten and Durmstrang, and they will most likely become the warriors representing their respective schools. Ivan reminded him that he was very curious about the idols, goddesses, and his own glory. What choice Ron will make? Ron was stunned. He had never thought of this, but he had to admit that what Ivan said was very likely to happen, and he fell into entanglement for a while. His adoration of Crum is true, and his fascination with Fleur is true, but Ron can't let go of the honor and bonus that the Goblet of Fire brings. Seeing Ron really thinking about it, Ivan scratched his head, www.mtlnovel.com. He was just joking. Forget it. You think slowly. I'll go to bed first. Ivan yawned tiredly, ignored Ron, and lay on the bed with the quilt and was ready to go to sleep. He has to get up in the middle of the night to do things, so he has to rest early today. Just as Ivan was sleeping in a daze, he suddenly felt that someone was shaking himself. He opened his eyes encouragingly, only to realize that it was Ron. At this time Ron already had a determined expression, as if he had just made a difficult trade-off. His voice became a little hoarse. I have already thought about it, Ivan. For the sake of Hogwarts' honor, even if Crum and Fleur become warriors, I will never let them. After several hours of deliberation, Ron believes that concession is the performance of the cowardly. Only by beating the opponent openly and winning the Goblet of Fire can he win the respect of the idol, the goodwill of the goddess, and the 1,000 Jin Jialong bonus. Ivan looked at Ron with a weird expression, resisting a spit, and said earnestly, Go to sleep. You have everything in your dreams. Chapter 590 In the middle of the night, in the Gryffindor bedroom, Ivan quietly turned up from the bed, glanced at Harry and the others who were still sleeping, opened the door gently, and walked towards the auditorium. As he thought, at this point in time, there was no one in the silent auditorium. The door was open, and all the little wizards who tried to get up in the middle of the night to throw papers like their own thoughts had already come. Inside the entrance of Ivan Mai, the surroundings looked a little dark, and the only light source was the large goblet placed on the high platform, and blue and white flames were constantly spitting out from the mouth of the cup. Try the easiest first. Walking straight to the edge of the age line, Ivan thought to himself, took out a piece of parchment with his name written in advance from his pocket, and then crumpled the paper into a ball, aimed at the mouth of the cup. The distance of three meters is not too far, and Ivan is still very confident of his quasi-head, so he directly threw the paper ball in his hand. The ball of paper was spinning in the air away from the hand, and it crossed the age line very smoothly and fell into the blue-white flame. Just when Ivan thought he was going to succeed, the flame suddenly rose, lifted the ball of paper, and finally deflected and fell to the ground. Well, it doesn't seem to work. Seeing this scene, Ivan touched his chin and muttered to himself. However, Ivan didn't care too much about this defeat. He waved his wand and cast a flying curse to summon the goblet of fire, but the cup didn't move. He had to recall the ball of paper that had fallen to the ground and continued to try other methods. For example, using Transfiguration Curse to make an owl flying through the air with a note. It's a pity that Ivan soon discovered that the transformed owl couldn't even break through the age line, no matter how high it flew, as long as it entered the range of the age line, it would be shaken by a magical force. The rest of the attempts also ended in failure. Even if he tried several times to make the paper ball fall into the goblet of fire, he would soon be thrown out by the blue and white flames. Obviously, in addition to the age line set by the old professor, the Goblet of Fire itself has also been given recognition magic. It is most likely that the paper that needs to be put into the Goblet of Fire will be accepted, and other creatures will not work. Ivan even suspected that he had to put his name in by himself. Don't look at Barty Crouch Jr. in the original Time and Space who signed up for him without Harry's consent, but this guy will be a powerful confusing spell. Even the number of participating schools can be changed, so it must not be difficult for the Goblet of Fire to mistake him for Harry himself. This is deliberately embarrassing me, Ivan muttered to himself. The age line with the recognition ability of the Goblet of Fire is too tricky, and it is difficult to perform magic on a powerful magic item at a distance of three meters. 
He originally expected Dumbledore to leave some obvious loopholes for himself to drill, but he didn't expect the old professor to be so cruel and directly block all the paths he thought of. Thinking of this, Ivan's brows wrinkled involuntarily. Is it possible to apply for help? The way he can think of now is to find a powerful adult wizard, such as Professor McGonagall, let her impose a confusing spell on the Goblet of Fire and cast her own name in it, just like Barty Crouch Jr. did. Like that. However, Ivan felt that according to Professor McGonagall's staid temperament, she would only provide herself with some advice at best, and I am afraid that she would not be able to do things like cheating directly. Step on. Just as Ivan was thinking about it, a footstep suddenly came from outside the door. Somebody is coming? With a thought, Ivan turned his head and glanced, then drew his wand and tapped his chest, muttering softly. Charm. Phantom body curse. A cool, water-like film sud denly enveloped the whole body, and Ivan's figure disappeared in place. The footsteps outside the door were getting closer. After a while, a wizard, who looked like a 17- or 18-year-old, stepped into the auditorium. He wore a nightgown and looked around carefully and saw that there was no one in the dim auditorium. He breathed a sigh of relief and hesitated towards the flames. Go for the cup. Ivan, who was in a state of invisibility, held the magic wand and stared at each other's every move. There are usually only two possibilities to come here at this time. The first is that he wants to participate in the top three, but is not confident in his own ability and is worried about being laughed at, so he only dared to secretly put his name into the goblet of fire in the middle of the night. The second is to make things happen, controlled by Voldemort, and want to do something on the goblet of fire, or a Death Eater sneaked in in disguise. Ivan quickly ruled out the second option, because the young wizard didn't have any extra actions. After standing in front of the goblet of fire for a long time, he hesitated and took out a piece of parchment with the name written on it. Into the goblet of fire. The blue and white flame immediately engulfed the parchment, which meant that his identity as a warrior candidate was recognized by the goblet of fire. After all this was done, the young wizard seemed to have let go of some burden and slowly heaved a sigh of relief and then prepared to leave with anxiety and expectation. Perhaps he was too anxious when he turned around. The young wizard accidentally bumped into the table in front of him, his thigh knocked on the sharp corner, and he gasped in pain. The goblet of flame placed on the table was also affected and shook slightly. Ivan, who was observing in secret, was keenly aware of this, and his eyes lit up. It seemed that the goblet of fire had not been fixed by Dumbledore. Doesn't that mean... An idea popped out of Ivan's mind, and he cancelled the phantom curse on his body, blocked the door, and greeted enthusiastically. Good evening, senior. Who? A person suddenly emerged from the dark, secluded auditorium, frightening the wizard. With a brush, he took out the wand attached to his waist, tremblingly pointed to the front, and after seeing Ivan's face clearly, he asked uncertainly. You are. Hulse? Why are you here? Do you know me? Ivan raised an eyebrow, mtlnovel.com. It was a little surprised, he didn't know each other. Of course, you are the pride of our Gryffindor. We hadn't won the Academy Cup for many years before you came to school. Every year Slytherin beats us, and Quidditch. It is excited to talk about the past deeds of Ivan. Winning the Academy Cup is the result of the joint efforts of everyone in Gryffindor. I just did something that should be done, Ivan said modestly. By the way, I want to ask you to do me a favor, can you? Ivan asked with a smile. He didn't expect the other party to be suspicious of his admirer. This is much easier. What's up? The young wizard was stunned, looking a little at a loss. Ivan pointed his finger at the goblet of flame placed on the high table and spoke. It's very simple. Take that cup over. I want to sign up for the competition. One more today.